Hello and welcome to another video on differential equations. In this video, I'm going to talk about non-homogeneous systems of ODEs. Uh, so we're talking about uh, equations of the form x prime equal ax, with this is a homogeneous equation, uh, and what I'd like to do is generalize that to the case of non-homogeneous equations. So we saw this in second or with second order equations, but we were rewriting them generally as x prime minus ax, in other words, bringing all the terms that have an x in it to the left hand side and leaving everything else on the right, which in this case so far is just zero. And then we defined the right hand side to be the result of an operator acting on x of t. And so we define that operator as x prime of t, sorry, yeah, x prime of t minus a times x of t. And so the equation, the homogeneous equation that we're looking at here became L of x equals zero. And if we wanted to define a non-homogeneous equation, we would say, oh, replace that zero by some B of t vector, where that could be a function. Now with second order equations, we, uh, we covered cases where B of t might be e to the t, or t e to the t, or cosine of omega t, things like that. Um, but what I, we're gonna focus on here, I'll limit our discussion to the case where B is constant. So a constant vector. And um, we didn't really focus too much on these with second order differential equations because that was a fairly simple case. But here, that case already is a little bit complicated. So I'll just talk about two cases of constant vectors and leave the more uh, complicated functions uh, for you to think about uh, as a generalization of what we did with the um, second order terms. But those won't really come up uh, in our assessments and things. Okay, so let's do an example. So we have x prime is equal to the matrix 1, 2, 1, 1 times x. And I'm going to add to that an inhomogeneous term, 2, 3. Okay, so the first step in solving for the general solution is always going to be to find the homogeneous solution. And so I'll leave that for you to do, and you do that, you would do that by finding the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, as you know, discussed previously, and then put them together into the form C1 times e to the eigenvector times t times eigen, sorry, e to the eigenvalue times t times eigenvector plus C2 e to the other eigenvalue times t times eigenvector. Okay, so what we're interested in here is finding the particular solutions or solution. So um, let's see, when we have a constant as our inhomogeneous term, uh, the most obvious thing to guess is to take a constant vector as our uh, unknown guess. So that would correspond to a v1 and a v2 uh, first and second component of the vector, and those are both constants. So if those are both constants, when we plug this into the equation above, and we find, first of all, what is x prime of t? Uh, we would get zero and zero because the derivative of those two constants would just be zero. And so we have the zero vector on the right-hand side, bringing this down into the xp case here. And then we have the matrix multiplying it times the vector v plus two, three. And so we could turn that into uh, just a standard ax equal b type equation by bringing that 2, 3 over to the other side, equal minus 2, minus 3. And then I'll put that into an augmented matrix. And now row reduce. So if I take the second row and I add minus 2 times the first row, then I get, well, I'll leave the first row alone. And then I get a 2 minus 2 times 1 is 0. 1 minus 2 times 1 is minus 1. And minus 3 minus 2 times 2. So minus 2 times 2 is 4. So I'm taking minus 3 plus 4. So I get a 1. And now I will uh, multiply the second row by minus 1. And then I'll subtract the second row from the first row. And I get... 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, and then minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. Let me just make sure I did that. So we take 1 minus 1, and here we take minus 2 minus minus 1 is plus 1 is minus 1. Yeah, okay, and then 0, 1, and minus 1. So what we found now is that 
v1 is equal to minus 1, and v2 is also equal to minus 1. Okay, so this was a simple case where we ended up with the identity matrix in the row reduction, and that follows from the fact that the matrix here in front of V, our A, is invertible. And when that's the case, we're always going to be able to find a solution to this equation uh, of this form here, which is basically AV equal minus B. Okay, so that means that our XP of t is the constant vector minus 1 minus 1. And so um, why did that happen so easily? Let's just look back over at our matrix. When you take the matrix 1, 2, 1, 1, and you multiply it by the vector v1, v2, you can think of this as, now you can multiply it out completely and you get v1 plus v2, and here you get 2 times v1 plus v2 but I can split that up and think about it as column one, two times V1 plus column two, which is one, one times V2. And so when we set this equal to minus two, minus three, we're basically asking what linear combination of the columns can we use to get to minus two, minus three. So if I draw a picture of that, I would have the vector 1, 2, here, that's one vector, that's this guy, and then 1, 1, which is this one, and I'm asking the question, how can I add these, what coefficients, or are there coefficients v1 and v2, so that I can get all the way over to minus 2, minus 3, so down here. And so, had I drawn this a little bit more accurately, oops, would have been able to see a little bit better how I do this. So this is a steeper vector than minus two, three, and this is less steep. So what I have to do is I have to go back by one in this direction and then back by one in that direction. Let me do this in colors. Actually, I'll just do it over top. So here is the one, one vector, and here is the minus one, minus one vector. And here is the 1, 2 vector. And here is the negative of that. So the question was, can I get to the blue vector using the green and the gold one? And the answer is yes, if I put a minus 1 in front of the first and a minus 1 in front of the second, then I'll be able to get to the other one. And with an invertible matrix, these two vectors will always cover the entire plane as I choose different values of v1 and v2. And that's why this method will always work. In other words, choosing a v constant will always work when you have an invertible matrix A. Okay, so the case that this does not explain is what to do when A is not invertible. And so what happens in that case is these two vectors will no longer be independent vectors. And we'll see that in the next video where I talk about that case.